Goldilocks Productions provides professional internet, TV, and radio shows in the spiritual and new age genre. Hello, and welcome to the Connecting With Show. I'm Betty Jane Ware. Uh, we do have a special guest tonight, but just... coming I will be in Brantford at the Civic Center along with my very special guest uh, doing the psychic fair all weekends Friday Saturday and Sunday and also don't forget for those people in Toronto area that which best north runs all of October in various venues around the city and also a special shout out to my friends at Hawthorne House in Kleinberg who are putting on a fashion show next Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning and again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Avalon Gardens. So if you are interested, please give them a call and book your ticket. They have some left and they really like to make this a really popular event. So please go ahead and get in touch with Hawthorne Horse House to book your ticket. And I gotta tell you, I've seen the stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Please come by and check it out. And I just got a lovely text from Tiffany telling me, in Crystal Visions, very shortly, you'll be seeing some lovely, great velvet and lace capes. Just that's the information section of the show or the commercial section section of the show. I have to be careful how I pronounce my words tonight, I see. OK, um, and make sure you put that ink in that uh, Tiffany. Otherwise, you'll end up on a very different site. Just saying. And my special guest tonight is Miss Jennifer Pierce. And Jennifer is an awesome aura photographer. And I've had this done. And okay, we're just going to hold on for just a minute or two and we'll talk about Jennifer in a minute. Um, she's, we're just having a few glitches. That's okay. And so we are, I think you're just talking to me, hun, Tip, not just both of us. Um, so we, we have, uh, well, after this show in Brantford, we are off to beautiful London, Ontario, which is um, another, it's a show that I've done before with Jennifer, actually, and it's always great to get down there and see all the people and do a ton of readings. Uh, it's a very, really healing process for me. This last weekend, as I've said, I was in Ottawa and we did um, the Ottawa Psychic Fair, and one of my favorite things is when I go to the Psychic Fairs is the um, return clients, not because they're returning clients, because it makes me feel so good that I've, I've given somebody something that they want to come back and experience again, and so it's quite awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jennifer because Tiffany's just talking to me. She's not on the group chat on, on Facebook Messenger, just to let her know. So, um, uh, Jennifer is an awesome or here. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. So a couple of questions. First of all, tell us a little bit about what you do. So what I do is I take pictures of people's aura. That's basically the energy around you. Um, everything has an aura. and um, But I also take pictures of, I also get the information of everyone's chakras and their meridians. So essentially we're taking a snapshot of who you really are and what, and, and what you really believe and, you know, what's really going on with your life. And I'm abashed. You know, Snapchat, Snapchat of who you are. Okay. And then, and then we get, and then I give a reading based on that. And it's all designed to make people happier and more satisfied with their lives. And, um, you know, just, just make people happier and more fulfilled. Okay. So if somebody wanted to have their picture, their aura taken, how would they get in touch with you? Where could they come and see you? Oh, well, they can see me next next weekend in Brantford. With me. Um, they could, pardon? Is it with me? Yes. 
Um, they, you know, so um, I live in Paris, Ontario, and um, if you contact me through my website um, at uh, www.choose-joy-now.com, um, we, uh, I, you can come to see, there, I have a workspace that I work out of, and you can come and do it there, or um, you can contact me, and if you, depending, if you're in the DC area, you know, somewhere between London and Toronto, um, I do have parties as well. Very cool. Now, I do have another question for you, and this is just because I know you. Do animals have auras? Pardon? Do animals have auras? Uh, yes, of course animals have auras. And I have taken pictures of animal auras. Um, typically, they, it is also taking a small picture of the human's aura as well. It's kind of like taking a, it, it's, it's like taking a group shot. Awesome. That, I, I didn't. I guess I hadn't really thought about it, but then today, when I was thinking about the show and what, what sort of questions I was going to ask, I wonder if she's done her little pooches po a photo. Yes, I have taken my little pooches aura, and she has a very, very, very light um, violet aura. Of course. Now, what does that mean, light violet? Um, well, it's a very spiritual color, which. Um, her, her being a little healing dog, you know, it's not an unusual thing. And it was done a couple years ago, so she was a lot younger then. It's probably gone for Okay. Why do you think that is? It's you know, or they are just, you know, very serene and, you know, life is big for them. Absolutely. Okay, now you mentioned the word meridian. What does that mean? Those are your acupuncture points. Oh. And there's 12 of them. 12? Wow. Yeah, there's 12 meridians and they're acupuncture points. And um, uh, I use Louise Hayes' book, Heal Your, Heal Your Body. Okay. And that's how I know it's on. So if there's something a little off with them, if they're not perfectly even, then, you know, well, are you stubborn or are you holding on to things out of fear? Are you being critical of others? Are you being critical of yourself? Um, are you being honest about who and what you are? Or the common people have with their audience, they don't have any fun. <laughs> Do you find that more in adults or in children? Uh, more adult, but on the odd time you'll have a child that does, doesn't have any fun, oh, you know, just sad. people please her, you know, um, and it, it's a, yeah. well, uh, yes and no, um, typically it's, it's more those, you know, those happy, ch those children who just want to please, 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 and they turn into adults who please, 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 please. Okay. And, you know, if you can catch it or you can tell the parents that, you know, you know, your children don't actually want to do the things they want they're doing. They're just trying to make you happy. Um, you can you can stop that by um, it's more something if the parent senses something off or if the parent wants it or even if the child wants it. Often, children who see aura are very fascinated, and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, I'm not crazy. This is what I see. And so if you can get them, and, and they'll come up, and they'll... The child gets a pretty picture, but the parents, but the, the parents would get the, the reading. Uh, you know what's going on. What do we need to stop? What do they need to stop now, rather than letting them set these patterns for life? Okay. 
Well, we have a caller, so let's see what question our first caller has. I know you read tarot as well, so don't be afraid to pull a card. And our first caller is from area code 262, so let's find out what they would like to know this evening. Hello. Hi, my name is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Wisconsin. And how can we help this evening? Um, I was wondering if you see anything with my art going anywhere or also, well, if you see anything with that too. Okay. Um, Jennifer? Did you well, want to pull I'm card? Sorry, I didn't hear the question. What is I said, do you see anything with my art going anywhere? And then I was wondering if any, if you saw any, sorry, my dog's barking at me, any love relationship too? Okay. Being the animal <laughs> kind. So she's always got. Absolutely. And that's your end result. So, on the good side, um, become really powerful with your art and love will come. Okay. Interesting, because I pulled the magician. Um, so you've got all the tools there. You're just not focusing maybe on the right one. But there's infinite possibilities coming, so you just have to believe in yourself a little more and uh, and and move forward. And with the love question, I actually pulled the thirteen card of the major arcana. Death card. So something needs to end before you can move forward. So maybe you're holding on to something from the past that you have to let go. Pardon? I just um, broke up with someone a little before June, 
so okay so maybe you're still okay. holding on to that um, a little bit so it's time to let it go so you can move forward <laughs> and sometimes that's part of the stumbling block because they're still holding on to some to something and you and you need to be able to regain that bit of um self but absolutely yeah. i think you're in the yeah. right direction though yes and sometimes you have to be a fool and take a leap absolutely yeah even if you don't have all the information you just have to take a leap okay okay michelle that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> you can you can Thank do this you so much you're very welcome you have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too, Michelle. Okay, good you luck. Too. Thanks. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Okay. So, Jennifer, I had a question for you based on. I, I know a person that saw auras their whole life, yet never knew what they were. So, how can that be? Well, if their family doesn't explain it to them, or, and, and it could be just they thought it was normal. Okay. You know, if you've seen it your entire life. People don't realize they're colorblind. Mm -hmm. Because they know, because they, they, they don't go through that. It's, a, it's a, just considered something that is normal and part of them. And you know, that's that can be that would be how you'd never you'd never know what Nora was. Okay, I guess that makes. I guess I'm just so used to that that it was always explained, and I it's normal for me. So I I don't quite understand. It's like somebody said yeah. to me one day. What's it like being psychic? And I kind of went, well, what's it like having a red, like a left arm? And they sort of looked at me, but it's no different, right? So. Yeah. Like you and I, I'm a fourth generation psychic. You're I've been a psychic all your life. It's normal. This is the stuff that was talked about at dinner tables. And at home and you know it's just not something that is you know absolutely it's discussed or even acknowledged and certainly not acknowledged in the school system so there would be no reason for people to know what it what it is it's interesting because when I went to school now I, I know I've got a few years on both you and Tiffany but I went to school in small town Ontario Roaches Point um, and I remember the French teacher taking us down to the gym to do meditation. And I didn't know what it was. It was just a relaxation exercise. And we did it once, maybe once a week for a couple of months. And it was as, a, as an adult that I realized what she was doing. If she called it if she called it meditation, she probably would have been burned at the That's something that we need to bring back into the schools. What do you think? Oh, definitely. Um, when, you know, over half the students need to be meditated to get through the day, there's, there's, not the, there's nothing wrong with the students. There's something wrong with the system. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I think we can so, go off on a tangent. <laughs> we have to. Yeah. If we hard on children energetically like children's chakras are typically a mess and often when i find a child who is balanced and chakras are all round and all the same size and there's nothing misshapen about them i look at them and say so you're homeschooled and they'll say yes mm -hmm. and there's almost no children who go to the school system who aren't who chakras aren't taking a beating so this cannot be healthy for people, you know, because it is important that your chakras be balanced and round and not misshapen because then life is easier. You can cope with life easier, you can cope with life better. And antidepressants and, you know, 
marijuana and um, anti-anxiety meds, how they work is they balance people's chakras. within 10% of each other. But they're, very, artificially, very but they're artificially balanced. That can't be good either. They are artificially balanced. But again, you, you, you need to get where you need to get. And, you know, if they weren't getting artificially balanced, then they would not be able to cope with life. So, you know, it's one of those things. So typically when I get someone who's balanced, my first question is, um, when was the last time you smoked a joint? Or, and <laughs> are you on antidepressant? Just so I know, is this artificial or is this real? Okay. Cool. I have another question, but let's take a caller first. So let's take caller 916, sure. please, Roz. 916, please, Roz. Hello. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. And who are we speaking with? Calling from Oakland, California. Oh, cool. Um, okay. You know this is my first time calling in. Okay, we'll be gentle. I'm just looking for some like guidance. I'm not sure if I should stay where I'm. Or whatnot. That's okay. What do you currently do? Uh, I work in PR. Okay. Jennifer, what do you think? I'm. Um, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Well, that sounded good. I think you definitely need to stand your ground. Give <laughs> um, you financial security. Say that again? Charging off somewhere is not going to give you financial security. What, is, what do you mean? Like, you know, moving... Um, you know, just but, um, charging forward without having all the information. You really need to take this slow. You need to realize that you just need to stand your ground and be strong. And um, I'm thinking changing careers right now would not be good for you. Okay. Um, because, yeah, no, nothing good's going to come from that. Um, <laughs> You really just need to, um, is your boss a real bitch? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. No. Or if I should go that route or whatnot? Not right now. You don't, ha you don't have all the information. You don't have all the skills. You don't have all the contacts. And you will get that where you are right now. But if you go charging off and, you know, nothing good's going to come from that. You need to continue learning. You need to, and, and, you know, let your job end naturally. And, you know, really, really, um, really learn to work with your boss. Yep, she's a bitch. Um, but, you know, a lot of times women are bitches because, you know, they've had to fight so hard and they're sitting there and they're fighting and they're just, you know, and you just have to find a way to deal with her as a human. And no, you see, the, the, the major thing about it is that the culture really sucks and a lot of us are really getting sick of it. And the, the main thing is, is that she very much underpays me. I'm getting paid $15,000 less than the, than our regional average and almost $8,000 less than Sacramento. And even though I pointed that out to her and I, I'm getting paid right now. And so I think that's why yeah. I'm like really anxious to better myself, you know? Yes, but moving is not going to make things better at this point. 
Um, definitely. My guys, are, my guys are not good with time. Um, that is. Uh, what they're saying and what I'm getting for, for you is to let this job die a natural death. Use it and, you know, um, just something better will come from it. It's interesting you say that. So, like, do you see a natural death? I don't know if you had to, like, get the energy of her selling the company because it's like... have to hold on and not do anything rash, which is going to end up badly for you. The last okay. lady I told her she needed to take a leap, don't take any leaps. Yeah, no, you okay? Need to you, need to take, you do not need to take any leaps, okay? You need to be as, you know... That will work best for you. Awesome. Um, if I want to ask another question, do you have like a website I can call to, or? Um, yes, my, my my website is on. It, it's a it's a choose dash joy dash now dot com. Oh, and okay. you can send me an email, and we can set up a Skype session if you want. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ray. Okay. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Gosh, it's horrible when bosses get in the way of us moving forward. But I have to admit, I pulled, I pulled probably the same cards as you did, and I was just sitting there going, "No, no, you got to wait because no matter what happens here, waiting is the best position that you can be in." Because I just. that you know. so uh. yeah sometimes that is and I often like it when I get two di wildly different readings in a row mm -hmm. because then I at least know that my guys are in touch absolutely the last lady I said you know the first lady we said you have to take a leap you have to be strong and yeah. we're all those things. Absolutely. yeah absolutely so I have a question if somebody we talked about the chakras and being perfectly round or in balance or however you want to put that my question is, if somebody came and sat down and had their picture taken, would you be able to know right away if they had an illness or would they change or would you have had to have a ground picture taken, like a baseline? You, the, the, progr the program can do that. Okay. And it is actually, been, it is actually being used in the United States. So I am only interested in how people are feeling, their emotional states, their, you know, the, the state of their spirits, basically. Okay. okay. But the pro, it's, but it's You know, you, you take, I, I, I had a man last year, and he was this gorgeous in his 20s, he had a great body, and he sat down, and he's completely balanced. Mm -hmm. Completely. Everything was balanced. He was a really great color. Everything was the same, and I looked at him. I said, "You were really balanced." He goes, "Well, I get acupuncture. I work out four, five times a week, and I get acupuncture twice a week because I take care of my body and my soul." And I said, "Well, you're doing it very well." And I'm like, "Yes, exactly." So you know, he's he he was taking care of both parts, and you know, his doctor was were taking care of his body, and he came to me to see what was going on with his soul, and I was like, "Well." Surprised. Um, so, cool. it was just he was extremely balanced, more balanced than you get in a general. Like, you, there are people who are balanced, and you know, but he was he was far more balanced than the, even my balanced people. So, okay, that was interesting. But mm -hmm. he 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 did. He he looked at me and he said, "I take care of my body and my soul." And I said, "Well, yes." And I took a picture of your soul, so your soul is good. Cool. Okay, let's take another caller, number 856, please. Hello. Hello. 
Hello. Laura, are you Hello. here? Hello. Hello, is somebody there? Hi. Laura. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. Yeah, How I can hear you. Good. That's good. How can we help you tonight, so Laura? I, I would like to know what you see for me coming up for work. I'm with my contract and in a few weeks, and I was hoping you could see me getting another contract right away. Okay. Jennifer, what do you see? Okay. Right away does not look optimistic. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, it just seems unlikely. Um, yeah, um, but eventually, yes, your end result is good. Um, but there is quite a bit of, this is stress between, you know, having your contract end and then the next one. Um, as I said, timing is not my strong suit. Steady, do you have a timeline for her? Yeah, I'm not seeing something happen until probably the winter. Um, but I also see it being better than a contract, so probably a job offer and not just a contract. In a sense, from here too, um, and it's something that you've worked on before, and you 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 really put the time and effort in, and it's basically, you know, I have if I have your end result. This is three of wands, so Ooh, cool. this would be, you know. The, the, the ship's coming in after a long period of work. So, you know, life will pay off, but it, there are some periods of stress before that happens. So she said winter, so we're talking maybe December or possibly November. Well, I see, I see things uh, in season, so I'm going to tell you I see snow on the ground, so hopefully we get an early winter for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, probably going to be more January or February even. Uh, well, I'm hoping it's earlier than that. But no, I see things seasonally. So, I and this sounds really vague, but I see it either before or after Christmas because when it's around Christmas, I see the Christmas tree. So, I'm seeing um, December is sort of when, um, like, this. The physical start of winter is usual December 21st, so somewhere in and around there, but I'm not seeing it like that week, so either a little bit before that or January. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing snow yeah. on the ground. <laughs> Just view it as a long vacation and realize that something will come in in January. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you. Try not, try not to worry too much. Best yeah. of luck, Laura. I'm trying. <laughs> Best of luck, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we do have another caller. Her um, eight six zero, please, Roz. Hello. Hello, Amla. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. How can we help this evening? Hi. Um. So I have a question about the next couple of weeks. I have some um interesting opportunities to meet people. And here's my thing. Basically, I'm an old soul and a deep thinker, and it's just. Even when you're with, I know you, I'm positive you must resonate with this. You probably do. Um, it's just, you know, everybody is on their own spiritual path, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just looking for, for somebody I could just resonate and just have a, a really cool conversation with. And it just, I find it difficult. I find it difficult because I'm just such a good soul. And mm -hmm. so I have some opportunities in the next couple of weeks. I'm wondering if you see me meeting somebody that I can really okay, so you're jive looking, with. Yeah, you're looking for romance and the whole bit. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Jennifer? I'm shuffling what you call what you call. Well, I pulled I pulled three cards and they're very interesting. Okay. okay. I pulled the nine of four. But you need to get out of your own way and stop being such a drama queen and just go with the flow. Okay. And don't hide. Yes, no hiding. Hiding would be bad. I do. I hide more than the whole drama queen thing. I don't think of myself as a drama queen thing. I think more. I hide because... Sometimes, sometimes it's also called the nightmare card. Oh. <laughs> can, you, can you explain that? I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. Well, I get the nine of the nine of swords is four swords a uh, nine swords over okay. a woman on a bed's head. Over the head of a woman who's sitting on a bed with her hand in her in her in her face with her head in her hand. Okay. And some people and some people read it as a um sign of nightmare. Other people see oh. it as more of a drama queen. Okay. So okay. if you're not a drama queen, um, but you do, like, you obsess and you worry and, you know, you, you stress about the fact that, you know, there's this potential lover out there and um, you would prefer just to go and hide rather yes. than, that is <laughs> rather than go. Yes. Okay, you know, it doesn't hurt to say, hey, do you want to get a cup of coffee? If the couple's flat, chances are they're just a moron who didn't understand. Okay. Okay. I speak from experience on this one. I asked a guy out for coffee three times, and it, it, it went over his head three times. And then he sent me this message, hey, maybe we can go for coffee. And I'm like, really? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So, yes, it was, it was just like, I was like, can you believe that? <laughs> How many times did I ask? And, yeah. and, then, and then, of course, he shows up with coffee. His own coffee. It doesn't go up for coffee. So I'm like, whatever. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it doesn't hurt. And, you know, men often give you lots of things to laugh over. Or, you know, romantic, romantic entanglements always are typically the, the lead to very funny stories simply because, you know, men are as inept as women at dating. Um, sometimes they're more inept. So, yeah. you know, you just yeah. can't hide because they're as terrified as you. And if you go hiding, they'll assume you're not interested. It's so true. And I get so, you know, I get so, um, And it's not an excuse, but I have to, I haven't gone on a date in three years. Mm -hmm. It's just, this is great. I, I, I'm in my own, like, weirdness. I feel like I'm a teenager all over again. And I have to get over that. I have to. It, yeah. yeah. And that's so yeah. good job of becoming yourself and learning to live by yourself. This is a really good skill that not many people have. And, and I do speak from experience because I have gone three years. So, you know, I do understand. And I do understand the temptation to become better and to make yourself better and work on yourself. But eventually you have something to do with other human beings. I know. And the thing, I think it's just a matter of like, I could just say. In the sense, they can't carry an intelligent conversation. It's just, it's, it's very, inter it's interesting. It's not like I'm hiding in the sense, I'm sure you get this. I'm not hiding in the sense of in my house. I just get little, well, yes, but there, there, there are many ways of hiding. You know, if you, yeah. everything you do only has other straight females. only go to all of these things that are traditionally only women, it's difficult to find a man. 
I'm on the wall now. And, and that's what I mean. Like, these next couple of weeks, I'm really excited. Tomorrow, there's like this Native American gathering. And then Thursday, there's something. It's going to be a mix. And even um, in, in a couple of weeks, there's another wellness expo thing that's going on. So. I don't yeah. be afraid to, you know, friend them on Facebook, you know, send them messages. You know, it's the 21st century. Women can be in yeah. charge. Well, absolutely. I, I agree. I really agree. But, I, you know, at the same token, I, I mean, I lo I understand, it. you know, there's only certain times, uh, so many times you, I mean, how It was under it was under threat of violence. My friend was like, "You must ask them for coffee." It didn't work, but you have to ask him again, and then you must ask him again. <laughs> I'm talking oh to the script. <laughs> but you know, it, nothing bad happened. It, 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 you know, I just laughed, and you know, it didn't upset me. It was it, I didn't die. It was there was really no embarrassment, and you know, he kept coming back to the shop and spending money. So this was not a bad thing. No, no, it's true. It's true. Cool. Okay. Well, I hope I um I'll, I'll be in touch with you and let you know how it goes in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. You do that. Yeah, I'm excited. Best I'm excited of luck, Emma. Yeah. Good luck. our listeners of your website again, Jennifer, and how they can get in touch with you? Okay, so they can contact me through their website, the Contact Me button. Um, it's uh, www.choose-joy-now.com. Okay. And as always, I'm just me, BettyJaneWare.com, or you can get through... be in Brantford, Ontario this weekend doing um, readings at the Civic Centre beside the casino. I do know that much. I've never been there. I've never even been to Brantford before. How un-Canadian am, am I? Because that's Wayne Gretzky's hometown. And that's about all I know about it. And where, Ale Ale and where Alexander Graham Bell was born. Oh, there you go. See? You're one of <laughs> then you should be. Um, absolutely. Yes. Because I, I, I now live in Paris, Ontario, which is about 12 minutes from Brantford. Oh, well, you get to sleep in your own bed then. Yes, I do. I get to sleep in bed. And next weekend as well when we're in London, which is only an hour away. Oh, no. 45 minutes from Paris, so. Which is Paris, Ontario, not Paris, France, just for those of us who are wondering. <laughs> Um, absolutely, and we're yes. from London, Ontario. And those of us from, yes, so the, if you're from Paris, France, you're called a Parisian. Yes. And if you're from Paris, Ontario, you're called a parasite. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I'm not even going to touch that one. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, so, <laughs> so I know, like, I know we do psychic fairs together. How long have you been doing psychic fairs? Uh, five years. Oh. Five and a half years, actually, now. Okay. So. That's cool. I, I bought the camera a little, uh, I bought the camera in June, just over five years ago. So we're getting pretty close to five and a half years. Okay. So do you prefer doing the aura part so, or the reading part? Um... We just take the photo and no, there's no report. There's just a little photo. And, you know, and my friend person always says, yeah, she's not supposed to talk <laughs> for that, but I can't resist. Yes. yes. I can't resist telling people what, 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 what explaining the actual aura. So I, I do, I do love giving readings. Okay. what you do um, I think we all do otherwise we wouldn't be in this crazy business that we're in 
Um, somebody said to me one day, is it really a business? And I said, well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. It's supposed to be is the only way that comes up. So have you ever, as an yes. experiment, have you ever taken a picture of, say, yourself or anything? to see how their aura changed so I think that would be kind of cool um, actually yes I have done actually we do um, I have done morning and evening of each of the three days of the fair oh cool and how do they change do they change um there, there was a lot of changing um, your aura doesn't typically change your chakras don't typically change from day to day moment to moment there is one exception if you are a psychic or an energy worker, <laughs> your aura and your chakras change because you're working with energy, you're flowing it through, and you're manipulating it. Mm. And so that does cause, and um, what it did do for the reader is I broke down and wrote a 10-page report um, about the... Saturday night, but yeah. <laughs> it seemed to have worked out of it by Sunday afternoon. So, <laughs> but something clearly happened, and you know, I broke everything down and I showed where all the changes happened. And you know, I said, "Well, this is this means this, and this means that." And you know, normally people don't change that fast. You know, I've had people come back. Um, when we were in Belleville last few months ago, yeah. a man comes back and says, I went home and my wife says I'm a bastard and uh, that she was completely wrong. I'm not a nice guy. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. And he's like, well, you know, I used to drink, and but I'm retired and I'm volunteering. And so we're like, so your wife doesn't notice, hasn't noticed that you've become a good guy, but your aura does say you've become a good guy. And he, he was the same as well. Yeah. Because, you know, he hadn't changed from one day to the next. No, it's just he's done some more But, you know, himself. a psychic will change from, you know, especially if they're working. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. If you're, especially, and I think in the psychic fair situation where you've got, when you're yeah. seeing, you know, 30, between 30 and 50 people in the course of a weekend. how you work too if you how well you're able to build your own energy field around you so yes you're touched but you don't carry it with you and I don't know how else to explain yeah. that um, but you read you know what it's yeah. like we get out there and sometimes then I, I always, know what you mean there's always that one that touches your well, heart I, yes five years ago I needed to have you know three yeah. glasses of wine um, to do that <laughs> now I just need a good night's sleep I need eight hours of sleep um, and yeah so you know when i first started the only way to do that was to basically you know have a few glasses and you know and that so i found that was the best way to shut it off um you know but that was five years ago and mm -hmm. i'm not and i couldn't better in five years um, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, i've learned more i've become you know and i've been reading for you know probably about 15 years but five years ago when i started you know when i saw 30 people in a weekend or yeah. 50 people in a weekend that was an entirely different feeling than you know doing a reading once or twice a month for a friend or a co-worker or you know family mm -hmm. Absolutely. so you know it is it, completely different and you know I do find it much easier now Facebook just popped up and said ground 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 how do you ground uh, I sleep <laughs> sleeping is my grounding absolutely it's where it's where I go to it, uh, and it might sound weird but Grounding is something that happens happens when I sleep. Um, uh, I am a, I, I am a star seed, and tying my uh, I try to do as little as possible that would tie me to this planet because I would prefer to go back to my own 
my own space, basically. Okay. And for those of you who don't know what star seeds are, or star seeds are people who have come to this planet to help. Well, try to fix you guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, to we're 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 trying to help humanity, and we're trying to help you see another way of doing things. And um, we are from other planets, and our soul, and we are our souls have taken this detour onto this planet. And if you are Sarseed, I do have four rules to live by. Um, there are four things you have to do to make sure you don't end up stuck on this planet, and they're fairly simple. One is to don't kill anyone. The other one is don't kill yourself. Uh, the third one is to avoid strange vows. Um, there, uh, there are some strange religious vows out there. The Masons have some strange vows. Any vow that requires moral eternity, maybe not the best idea. And then the fourth one is that if you have, feel like you have a life purpose, you need to go do it. Because you came here for a purpose, and you need to try to fulfill that purpose. Okay. And the aura camera is my purpose, and you know, waking up the star seeds and uh, shaking them out of their complacency is kind of what I do. Um. Okay. Um, Robin, yes, we're taking questions. Please go ahead and phone in or just type it right here. So um, I just had, I'm just dealing with a Facebook question. Um, so yeah, I, it's very interesting because I think that would be a conversation for another uh, time because I was, I was gonna say about um, uh, wedding vows are for eternity and thing and such, but. No, wedding vows are for till death do you part. Mm, depends on how you make the vow. Well, if they, if they pay for eternity, then that might not be the best vow for, um, and you, for all eternity, that's binding yourself to another soul. And, um, that can be very, very troublesome in that respect. So that would be something that I would, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. That's okay. That's what makes us different. Um, so um, again, let's just put, let's put your website up there one more. How can people get in touch with you, and where where will you be next? Um, I'm from Brantford next weekend. Then I'm in London, Ontario, and then we're off for the Canadian Thanksgiving. And are you going to Kingston? I know that's where we met last year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in Kingston. I used to live in Kingston, so absolutely. Yes. And then I'm back in home territory in Hamilton. Woohoo, me too. Then is Robin is asking us a question. Do you think I think we might have she might have missed this part, but um it's I can't see the whole question. It, do we think that antidepressants affect our readings? I think that I can answer this one because I'm of an age. I make no bones about my age. I'm over 50, a few years over 50. And a couple of years ago, as part of my um, uh, going through that, going through the, the menopause, as my doctor calls it, she put me on a mild antidepressant to deal with the uh, hot flashes and things like that. So I would think that, yes, they do, but it depends on how strong they are. It would depend on... A lot of different things. When I was working, it didn't. It just made me able to function. What do you think, Jennifer? Um, well, I, I know psychics who are on antidepressants and they're mm -hmm. fine. And I know psychics who go on antidepressants and I'm like, yeah, you are now. Again, it depends on the dose. It depends on who you are, and it depends, I guess, whether or not you need it. Absolutely. Um, I know. So if you're if you're going if you're going on antidepressants and you don't act because you're depressed because your marriage is ended or you know you lost your job or any of these things and you go on antidepressants, it's not act. And that's the t 
time that people end up killing their psychic abilities with it. Absolutely. And the other thing too, it's like everything, um, if you're under a proper diagnosis from a doctor and under medical care, then like for PTSD, which is what is popping up, um, I think that you there could be a there could be a reason why you shouldn't possibly be reading. And maybe you need to not be reading during that time. It's not it doesn't matter whether or not the medication affects the reading, it's whether or not you're in the right headspace. Because let's face it, I don't rec I don't yeah. read if I well, I don't drink and I don't do drugs, but if I was doing any of those things, you can be darn sure I wouldn't be doing a reading um, just because my headspace wouldn't be there. And I think yeah. that if, if, if mentally I'm not And, and prepared, certainly yeah. alcohol never helps any reading. <laughs> um. I'm a little more blunt. Um, it's, I haven't, I, this not drinking thing is a relatively new thing for me. It's uh, something else entirely. It's but, also new for me as well. Um, so it's not that I can't read when, it, I've been, it, when I've been drinking, it's just that it's not a good idea because there is no filter. And, yeah, well, no, um, I found, uh, and this was before I was doing this professionally, I found that, uh, like, for parties and things like that, I found it far less effective when I was, you know, you know, had a few drinks and someone talked me into, you know, pulling out the cards. You know, the readings do not go as well as, you know, when I'm actually in the proper headspace. And the more I drink, the more I drink, the, the less the less coherent I became. Um, so, you know, those things, like psychics tend to fall into one of two categories, those who drink a lot and those who drink nothing. Absolutely. So I want to thank you very much for coming out and, and giving me an hour of your time. Thank you for this having evening. me. It was lovely to get to know you a little better. And I do look forward to meeting you this weekend in, where am I again? Brantford. And Bradford. I think oh, I'm, my husband yeah. kept saying Bradford, so I was completely confused today. But uh, I know I'm spending most of my time over the next four or five weekends with other people and not my husband so it'll be good to see some friends so thank you for your time this evening and everybody can get in touch with you through www.choose-joy-now.com or they can come see you in Brantford and of course I am bettyjaneware.com at 416-894-2602 please don't forget to come out and see us at Which Best North happening all over Toronto and I will be doing readings at Wonder Work, works on Baldwin Street in Toronto on the 5th from 7 till 9 of October. So that's going to be an awesome, awesome event. And then next week, I am in, I am in, where am I again? Oh, yeah, I know where I am. I'm in London, Ontario. In London. I'm in London. I'm glad somebody knows where I am. I just go where my GPS tells me to. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And thank you very much once again, Jennifer, for being on with me tonight. Um, good night, Thank everyone. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to seeing you on Friday. I will see you Friday, and your little pooch, too, Cindy. Cindy, right? Cindy. Good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Bye.